All right, y'all. So we're going to be diving into a video that's going to explain how much crypto you need to be a millionaire by 2025. Um, let me know some of your best picks down below in the comment section. What is some stuff that you really believe in and you have conviction towards? Um, obviously, this is going to be based on price predictions and, and people's price targets. And you never know if that's going to come in the past. The way that I personally am, approach crypto, and this is not financial advice. This is just what I do. I find teams and communities that I believe in, and then that's what I go hard in. I believe that people can push crypto for it, so the community, and I also believe teams. At the point where a community turns toxic and, and a community turns bad and starts turning on each other and things like that, I usually try to, you know, get out, abandon, because if you, the, you can't keep the community together, like everything's gonna fall apart. Like every good project needs a core. It needs a community that's inviting, welcoming, and something that's going to draw in other people. If people go and look at a community and all they're seeing is trash, why would they jump into trash? So that makes no sense. So it has to be a strong community, a tight knit community that's together. And mainly, you know, ma mainly, mainly trying to push the project forward. I'm not saying that all fake positivity, happiness and things like that. Not at all. That's, that's not what I'm saying in the slightest. If there's criticism and, and, you know, good criticism, and then things get done about the criticism, that's a strong sign of a community as well. Um, and the impact of a community and the willingness of a team to actually do something about how the community feels if the community, if the um, team actually makes them changes. So, I mean, that it could be a lot of good signs in that front. Then there's just the team that you believe in, where people got a track record where this person rarely ever loses. So I will bet on this person or that group of people. And that that's my, that's my other approach. So I feel like when you... Take that type of approach towards crypto when you get something wrong and, and the, or the technology or what what um basically what what the project is, what is it going to do? What problem does it solve in the world? When you when you focus on things like that, then you can actually go where you can see where you went wrong. If you make if you took a loss, you can see where you went wrong. If you were right, you can understand why you were right and what headspace you were in. So either way, you can improve. Never just listen to someone else because then you win or lose, you don't learn anything. And the most important thing here is the learning. Obviously, you're going to feel like the most important thing is the money. But the most important thing here is the learning experience, because the more you learn, the more you know, the more money you will make and continue to make in the future. So don't luck up on making money. Get skilled and, and then making money will be a lot easier for you. So, yeah. Anyway, let's jump into it. How much crypto do you need? to become a millionaire by 2025, how many Bitcoin and how many penny altcoins watch today's whole video. Keep in mind, investing in crypto is incredibly risky. Never put in any money you are not willing to lose immediately. And I am not a financial advisor, nor can I see the future. So just use today's video as a jumping off point and hit the like button if you appreciate these breakdowns. So by 2025, my conservative estimate has always been for Bitcoin that we're going to hit at least $120,000 per coin. Now, that may seem like a lot, but looking at Bitcoin's price history, based on what Bitcoin does, typically 12 to 18 months after each halving. The halving is a huge deal. Uh, so just to be clear, everyone is aware of the fixed supply of Bitcoin. There will only ever be 21 million, but not all 21 million have been issued to the world yet. And so we're at about 19 million out of 21 so far. And every 10 minutes, more and more get issued. And the halving is when that issuance schedule gets cut in half. So the supply, the forced sellers, those that pay money to produce Bitcoins, which then have to sell it to pay for their costs, that's going to be halved. And so the really simple way to think about it, Ed, is if demand remains the same and the Bitcoin sold gets cut in half, should have an impact on the price to the upside. A having happens, Bitcoin's price explodes. A having happens, Bitcoin price explodes. Having explosion, the last having just happened. So I just really want you to understand that to me, this is very reasonable by 2025, because even if demand for Bitcoin just stays the same, and by the way, based on all the institutional on-ramps that just opened up, Demand for Bitcoin is actually increasing, but yep. even if demand just stayed the same, if supply faucet gets cut in half, price has to go up. One other thing I will say about Bitcoin that I think people don't understand, and this is part of the part of the innovation that's really important. And as explained by famed investor Lawrence Lepard, the higher Bitcoin's price goes, they can't mine the Bitcoin any faster. That's fundamentally different than even gold. Every commodity in the world, if you increase its price, supply goes up. If, if gold went to 10,000 tomorrow, we'd mine more gold. 
if corn went up, if oil went to $300 a barrel, we'd drill for more oil. You would get more, higher price, you would get more. No matter where the price of Bitcoin goes, the issuance schedule is set. There's not going to be any more. It comes out, you know, every block is, you know, 6.25 coins right now, soon to be half of that. So, you know, it's, that's, that's unique. And, yeah. and I, I, as a result of that, the world has never seen anything that really kind of looks like this, which is why, you know, it's, I mean, Ronnie Stofferly had a great chart on it. Showed, I mean, Bitcoin from inception has grown at 145% compound annually, and it's got a lower sharp ratio than any other asset. I mean, this is an amazing beast. So based on Bitcoin's current price today, and by the way, as I'm recording this, Bitcoin is dipping lower, but that just means that the lower Bitcoin's price dips, the easier this will be to accumulate. And based on today's current price, you would need to own 8.3 Bitcoin today, and you'd be a millionaire by 2025. Now for the average person, owning 8.3 Bitcoin today is starting to become unattainable. Altcoins give you a better chance at generational wealth, but they do come with more risk. So if you're willing to take on more risk, I would look at altcoins. I would also subscribe, join the 1.48 million people that subscribe and tune in to Altcoin Daily for their crypto alpha. But for Ethereum, my conservative projections by 2025 is 9,000. Honestly, I could have probably gone even a little higher because if I think Bitcoin from this price point could 2x, Ethereum to me could at least 3 to 4x. This would be that low end 3x. But again, I want to keep this reasonable. I want to keep these realistic. And with the Ethereum ETF happening July 15th, now give or take five days on either side of this, but with the ETF happening. What is a spot Ethereum ETF? Basically, just like the Bitcoin ETF, it's now gonna allow traditional finance, institutional money to finally be able to easily buy Ethereum. Crypto Casey breaks down what this Ethereum ETF means. So why is this a big deal? Well, there are a ton of people with a ton of money held with their legacy finance and retirement accounts, and a spot Ethereum ETF would be a regulated, stable way for all of these people to gain price exposure to Ether and their investment portfolios. And if the approval of a spot Ethereum ETF is anything like the approval of the spot Bitcoin ETF, it's likely going to be a great success, as it would allow the floodgates to a ton of money that's been on the sidelines. I actually have an interesting question, a question that I find interesting. If, if you know the answer, or you have thoughts and opinions, let me know in the comment section down below. So at the point where crypto is mainstream and crypto becomes adopted, what does happen to these institutions? Because, you know, like bank accounts, like bank accounts, some of the retirement accounts and things like this, people put their money into this stuff and the money's not really there. That's just numbers in the screen. So what happens to businesses like this if people start to take self-custody of their own crypto and, and now people are holding their own assets so that these banks and stuff can't go out and actually, you know, spend other people's money to do what they're doing to keep, to make the business profitable and things like that. What's going to happen to all the institutions who relies on other people giving them their money and trusting that they'll pay it back when the time comes? Like what happens when people start to not lend out their own money to these banks and, and not lend it out to their retirement funds and, and all that. And they just keep it in a crypto wallet. They keep it to themselves. What happens at that point? Like what happens with all these businesses like that, that relies on people basically not managing their own money, for, essentially. Like, let me know what you all think about that in the comment section. I think that that's, that's interesting. That's something that I think about a lot. It's like, bro, crypto really is going to harm, but maybe that's why the regulations and stuff is so harsh. Maybe that's why the, the SEC and stuff like that keeps going after these projects and stuff to try to delay it as much as possible because they're trying to figure out what's what's next for us because these systems are going to crash it's, it's a failing system we need crypto but we can't let crypto adoption happen way too fast because we won't be in a position to not get completely wrecked because i mean obviously if everyone in the world just at the same time all withdraw their money all hold everything that that first off that would be impossible that literally would be impossible but that that would cause a huge that would that would cause you know that that would destroy America anyway like that would be crazy like that would be crazy to think about but yeah let me know what you all think so again a nine thousand dollar Ethereum with the ETFs opening up even if those Ethereum ETFs underperform still this price still very reasonable in my opinion now how much Ethereum would you need to become a crypto millionaire by twenty twenty five 
111 Ethereum. Now, how about Solana? How much Sol do you need to become a millionaire by 2025? The comparison is like Android versus Apple. So if Ethereum is more like Android versus Solana, more like Apple. Solana feels like Apple. It's a closed system, but it's very slick, very good. Will create great loyalty. Ethereum. To be fair, Apple, Apple don't get hacked like that, but I see where you're going with it. I see where you're going with it. It is much broader. Both can thrive. Both can coexist for different reasons. Where do we expect Sol price by next year? Global macro investor Raul Pal weighs in from our last interview. If Solana is at 200-ish today, right, for it to go up 100% would be, in crypto summer, would be highly unusual. At least 300% would be pretty standard. That would be ETH all-time highs versus the previous all-time highs of that high. So that will put it 600. So let's mark that as like, that's a reasonable spot. You know, if I use a few charts and a bit of, you know, log charts, I get somewhere between 800 and 1200. In a, in a complete bubble cycle, I think it can go above 2000. In a short stunted cycle, 750, something like that. Now me personally, I believe Solana just in terms of narrative is the gem of this cycle. So price wise, things could get crazy. If price can hit at least 1,100, then you would need 909 Solana today. So the thing that, that the thing that's weird about Solana, and I still believe in it for sure. The thing that's kind of turned me off to Solana a bit, it's that the majority of the things that's relevant is the meme coins. And a lot of the meme coins are scams. So when you dove into it, you see how quickly their coins can come out. You see how quickly people make money and how quickly people lose money. Um, and you you are actually in the trenches, like learning and like, cause I, I, I've abused the fact that I know how, I know how to make money on Solana. Like I'll put it that way. But it's like, is that sustainable? Because at a certain point, people get wrecked so many times. First off, they're gonna either go broke or they're they're just not gonna trust anything on Solana. And I feel like uh, that's something that is kind of like Pump Fund, especially, is helping people get to that point where it's like, what's what is there on Solana besides this? It's like, cause I don't know, I don't I don't know. I know um, Render is on Solana, but outside that. Like, what else is there on Solana that's worth holding and worth believing in and worth, you know? Like, because if, if Solana has a lot more things going on, that, that should be made a lot more, you know, it should be a lot more eyeballs on stuff like that. So that would be interesting to look into. Actually, I'm going to make some videos on that. I'm going to dive into it and see. I'm going to dive into what some of these networks have, because if I have the questions, I'm sure other people have the questions as well. So let me know in the comment section if you know the answer, and I, I will do my own research and dive a little bit more into it. Um, Solana is something that I, I do believe in and I'm holding, but I don't even have all that information. It's like, it's, eh, you know, my reasons aren't as solid as they could be. I feel like the more that I dive in deeper, the more solid my conviction will become too. But I, I'm convicted enough to hold it right now. So yeah, and I think that that's good. That That's what we should be doing with all projects, just getting more and more conviction as we go along, um, getting more and more educated to become a millionaire by next year. Now, before we look at penny altcoins, so make sure you watch today's whole video and give it a like. Uniswap is the crypto I wanna tackle next simply because Uniswap has real revenue. Annualized revenues earned by liquidity providers on Uniswap in 2023 amount to over 350 million, far ahead of the nearest competitor if we're looking for cryptos with actual revenue, which to me means can they sustain? Will they be around at least another year, if not five to 10? Uniswap has actual users, fundamentals. It is, to me, a blue chip in the space. If it can get to a price of at least $220 per token, you would need around 4,549 uni in your wallet today. Now, looking at this, I will say, maybe I should have included uh, another tier listing out the price that this many tokens would cost today versus the price of these tokens today. Just know, generally speaking, that the lower cap you go, the newer, the riskier, the lower down the list of crypto coins you go, 
the less it's going to cost you today, but the more risk you take on, right? Bitcoin will cost you the most, but it's the least risk. Cardano and Polkadot. Some people call them Solana's little sisters. Let's say that Cardano can get to just under $10 this cycle and Polkadot, because of all the marketing they're doing, can get to around $350 per coin. How much of each of these would you need today? You would need just over 100,000 ADA tokens in your wallet and Polkadot 2,857 DOT tokens to become a crypto millionaire by next year. Injective, one of the blue chip gems in the Cosmos ecosystem, let's say it can go from $19 today to just under 200, actually $180 per coin. This one I actually sort of undervalued simply because it, it hit all time highs just a few months ago. In a raging bull market, I, I'm still bullish. I still think this could go farther, deeper, but because I think it front ran a little bit of its gains, it topped off at $52 per coin four months ago. My conservative projection would just be honestly a two to three X to four X from that. So 180 per coin total. And you need 5,555 injective tokens today. Last up, I wanted to include a meme coin and I wanted to include an AI token. I'm bullish for different reasons on both sectors. These are two that I own, but feel free to put in the own me your own meme coin that you believe in. Again, my play for meme coins is usually just a proxy play, meaning pick the best coin in each ecosystem. Interesting. That's a nice approach. Um, so he got Brett. I mean, if you know, you know, type. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, cock. I actually own both of those. Okay, let me see. Okay. I see you. I see you. If the ecosystem that you choose does well, obviously their main meme coin, I think, would do well. Also, if you're looking for a great place to buy, sell, or trade. As far as that ETH one, like we on base, baby. We on base. Base is where it's at. Toshi is where it's at. Altcoins. In my opinion. Join me on Bybit now. Earn. Okay, so yeah, now he's just gonna go through promotions, but there we have it, y'all. Let me know what you all think. Let me know how you all feel, and let me know what, what you're jumping in, what you have conviction towards, man, but there we have it. We're gonna end the video here. Um, Be sure to drop that thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications, and yeah, I'll catch you all on the next one, fam. Peace out, y'all.